Greetings to you all in the matchless name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am privileged and honored to be here with Reverend Dr. Safir Atiel. He's a humble servant of God and his contribution in the ministry of God is immense. And he has been the principal of UBS from 1972 to 87. So, sir, I'm really glad that um, in spite of your busy schedule, you have given me the time to have the short time with you. My honor. Sir, I would like to ask you just a few questions. So, first of all, sir, please tell us a little bit about yourself. I was born in a Christian family. My father, my brothers, my uncles, many of them are uh, in the ministry. But you know, I became a Christian because I was a teenager when I committed my life to Jesus. I accepted him as, his, as my savior. That's when I really became a Christian. Then I went and uh, schooling in Allahabad University when I was studying. My roommate for two years was Chitan Jamir, who then became one of the ministers in Nagaland. And, uh, Chitan Jamir and Subha Jamir and uh, myself used to sing trio in churches and preach and so forth. Then I went to study theology and uh, in the Old Testament I took a PhD from uh, Princeton. When I took PhD in uh, Old Testament, I was the first national of India having a doctorate in, the, in Old Testament. So. Then I became the, the principal, uh, vice principal, and then principal of UBS. Uh, also, I was involved in a, a Luzon movement, which is a movement uh, on world evangelism. Uh, I was uh, the founder of Asia Theological Association, so I was very much involved in its uh, ministry. And uh, also, I was involved in Sarambur. I brought uh, UBS into the Sarambur. I served as the secretary of the Board of Theological Education and one time as interim president uh, and involved it in many ways. So in many different ministries, my one main uh, accomplishment was remove, moving Union Biblical Seminary from a very small town of uh, Yavutmal to Pune buy this property, Pune property, and build all the buildings also. I am at present 94 years old, and I'm very grateful to God for the strength and the grace that I have. Yeah, what else can I do? Yes, it's really wonderful to listen to some of your contributions and your experience uh, in God's ministry. Sir, so you are the founder of Asia Theological Association. So can you tell us how you come up with the idea of starting yeah. Ibata? Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we had several associations of theological colleges in India and all over Asia. We had a Sarambur University in South Asia. We have Northeast Asia Association. Southeast Asia Association of Theological Schools. But they were all more uh, what we call liberally oriented mm. and uh, rad somewhat of radical theology. At the same time, we had very many uh, institutions uh, which were biblical and evangelical in a very strong way. Mm. So in 1968, when we had in Singapore a Congress of Evangelism, I called together the theological educators and theologians for informal two sessions. Mm. It was not in the program. I called them together. They appointed me. Now you go around and start uh, an association. So I went all over Asia, all major theological colleges. Mm. And I called two different consultations, one in Singapore and one in uh, Hong Kong where representatives from these colleges came. Mm. We decided to form an association. That is how Asia Theological Association was formed. Working with me were a couple of key people, mm. Bruce Nichols from New Zealand and Wong Rin Ro from Korea. Mm. So 
we three worked uh, together. We produced quite a few books. We had several consultations on issues. And uh, ARTA became an accrediting association, mm. which was not our first vision. Mm. First vision was to produce evangelical textbooks and uh, develop a evangelical theology. Mm. So it grew and grew and grew very big. And uh, there are coordinators in every country. And we have Asia coordination. Mm. And God is blessing it very much. And uh, it sets certain standards. It gives some guidelines to stre strengthen theology and theological education. Yeah. It's really wonderful to hear um, how God have led you to start uh, ATA. And yeah. there are many seminaries under ATA as well. Yeah. And sir, is there anything that you would like to say to the viewers? Oh, there are so many things I would like to tell. But I would say one or two, one or two main things. Uh, you should always integrate your uh, physical, mental, spiritual, emotional. Mm -hmm. You know, Jesus, about growth of Jesus, it is said, Jesus grew with favor with God, favor with men, and in stature and wisdom. So these are the areas where all of us ought to uh, ought to grow. So that is one advice. Don't think of your spirituality as separate. Mm. You can pray and study the Bible, preach and all of that, and you can do anything with your body. No, it has to be it has to be uh, harmony. There ought to be integration. Mm. And then a second thing I would ask everybody is keep learning. Yes. Keep. Your knowledge, let your knowledge uh, become more. Mm. There are so many resources that you can learn. Your mind is very important. Mm. Development of many people want to develop their body. They do physical exercise and all yes. that. But mind, no. So mind ought to develop. You have to keep learning. And there is oceans of knowledge mm. on website and so forth. You have to keep learning. And you have to keep good health. Physical health. Yes. Don't work too very hard all the time and destroy your health. Physical health is extremely, extremely important. Sir, can you please uh, tell us your perspective on discipline and how important it is for a Christian? Yes. Self-discipline is a matter of one's own choice and commitment and constantly working at that. So self-discipline uh, will see different aspects of our life together. Physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, and relation with people. All of these should integrate with each other. And uh, we must work for the very best. In every aspect of it, we must have, every Christian should have a goal, physically. What should I eat? How should I exercise? How should uh, uh, regular medical checkup? Because this is the temple of God. Mental, many people think that once your profession is very well studied, you don't have to study anymore. Many pastors think once they have theological degree, they don't have to continue to study. All of these are wrong. Part of the discipline is we should have a searching mind, seeking mind, keep on learning. Now with uh, uh, the artificial intelligence and uh, BARD and Gemini, Chat GTP and all mm -hmm. these Google, oh, there's oceans of things we can understand. Yes. Study. So we must study. We must study outside of theological uh, uh, stuff and discipline also means setting apart time, mm -hmm. time management. Otherwise, there are so many pressures upon us, and we don't do what things we should do. I have a time chart: how much time for family, how much time for exercise, how much time for rest, how much time for study. Mm -hmm. 
and go accordingly. Go accordingly. And it's just like spending money. We have to have discipline in uh, using money. We must have discipline in uh, using our, our uh, time. So, self-discipline has to do with uh, managing time, first of all, because there are so many urgent things. Yes. The urgents take over. The importance are set aside. Very bad. Secondly, it is a commitment. Whatever happens, whatever happens, we eat. Mm -hmm. Whatever happens, we shave and bath. There are certain things we do. Mm -hmm. So discipline has to do with the commitment to, uh, to do things. And discipline has to do with the constancy. Mm -hmm. We cannot just do one day, forget the next day like that. Yes. No. What else would you like to know about self-discipline? So, sir, I have heard that um, the students, while you were working here in UBS, they can set their watch by looking at you. If you are in your office, if you are in a prayer uh, time, that is how disciplined you are and how you use your time wisely. Yes, I, uh, you cannot be very exact, but, uh, uh, but somewhere or other you have to... You see, for example, our meal time, mm -hmm. usually we have correct time, meal time. Yes. Just like that, we should have devotional time, mm -hmm. time with family, for example. Mm -hmm. The time can be too busy and we forget our family yes. to have family devotion, our own private devotion. Mm -hmm. You know, these are the things we... Therefore, that is what I said, there should be a commitment. Commitment to do certain things that are important and set, uh, uh, set the time out for that. I mean, when I was in uh, UBS, every day I used to play basketball yes. or something. Even if it is raining, I'll be playing basketball. I have balls in my uh, home and then, so when students see me coming, they, they too come mm -hmm. and we play like that. So for everything, you should set aside time. Mm -hmm. I, I understand there are certain days we'll be traveling, certain days we'll have something ur urgent, but to take a week, in a week, we ought to set aside certain time for family, our own study, and, and so forth. Uh, taking care of our health is very important. Instead of going to hospital when we get sick, we should take care of our, uh, our medical checkup and, and uh, our eating, or so that we don't have to go to the hospital. Eating also. Evening, if you, if you came 30 minutes earlier, you would see our supper very light. Mm. We eat almost nothing at supper mm. and go to bed. And morning we have good breakfast. So some people eat very late and after eating they go to bed and they get fat yes. and they get all sorts of problems. Yes. So discipline is in different aspects of life. Yeah. Yes. So, sir, let's go to the next question. So, why do you think it's important to study theology? Oh, my. Theology is studying about God. Yes. Why should a Christian study about God? Of course you have. Everybody knows something about God. But to this systematically study is very important. Yes. I wanted my children, my son is a doctor, my daughter is a hospital chaplain. I wanted them to study at least one year in a seminary theology, set apart time and study. Uh, because in, in seminary, what we do in theological education is primarily studying the Bible. Bible is the source of our knowledge of what, who is God, what does God expect from us. Everybody thinks, oh, I know Bible, I read the Bible, and uh, all that. But to study theology is very important. I find on your uh, staff's back the name Michael. Mm -hmm. What does Michael mean? Michael. Michael means that you have to study theology. Michael means me, who, ka, like. El means God. Who is like God? You see? Yes. Now, unless you study theology, you don't understand a lot of things around us. Yes. 
a lot of words in the Bible. Mm. And, uh, but then the problem is uh, interpreting the Bible. Yes. Interpreting the Bible in its historical context, interpreting the Bible in its cultural context, mm. interpreting the Bible thinking what did it mean to the original readers of the Bible. So God's word came to us through the biblical world, Israel and uh, church, and then came to us. Mm -hmm. So we have to understand that word to understand the uh, Bible. Mm -hmm. Then of course, uh, in theology, we study history, history of, uh, history of the church, mm -hmm. history of how God worked with people, and in uh, theology, we study uh, social ethics, mm. how do we behave, and uh, we study about mission, especially UBS is very strong on mission, yes. mission, because we are all committed to mission. Uh, church itself, church itself is for mission. Church exists by mission, mm. for mission. So mission is not of a few specialists called missionaries. Mm. It is for every Christian. Jesus said, you are the light of the world. Everyone that is lighted, showing the light is what is mission. Mm. So I would uh, define mission in more in terms of mission is uh, the whole church, mm. not just the pastors and missionaries, the whole church taking the whole gospel the whole gospel means what? Not just Christ died for you, but the gospel of the kingdom of God. God's rule over everything. The whole church taking the whole gospel to the whole world. Mm -hmm. You know, our family needs mission. Our church needs mission. Our tribes, our tribes needs mission. All of us need mission. Mm -hmm. So, in theology, we study about mission and uh, and uh, how to do it, how to do it. Uh, and theology gives a lot of importance for church. Mm -hmm. We are all members of the church. Yes. Church is the called out group. Mm -hmm. uh, church is the people who are called out from the society to belong to belong to Him. Mm -hmm. So our faith is not an individual affair, but a corporate thing. Mm -hmm. It's a group thing. Christ compared us as a body mm -hmm. with himself as a head. Body has different organs and different churches are different organs. And we need to work together, rejoice together, think together, plan together. So studying theology means give us a broader perspective as to what our faith is, mm -hmm. what our church is. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. sir, one thing I really like uh, that you shared to me before is uh, when you asked me my perspective about mission. Yeah. And then you define that mission is um, everyone have Jesus Christ. That's and right. our mission is to let them know that That's right. Jesus is in them. Okay, let, very good. Let me explain that a little bit. Some of us think that we bring Jesus to those who don't have Jesus. Yes. Okay. No, Jesus is working with them, mm. but they know they do not know Him. Mm. Uh, a tribal person who worships some other gods, mm. Jesus is working with him. Yes. A Hindu, Muslim, eh? Jesus is working with them. So mission is something like introducing to a person the Christ who is working in him without him knowing him. Mm. So introducing Christ, that's yes. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. And we should know that uh, we are not giving Christ to anybody, mm. but Christ is giving us to people. Yes. Christ is saying, okay, I am working in this village. Mm. I need your help. Come. Yes. Help. That's what mission is. Mm. In conclusion, I would say what is most important is you have to have a concept what is your central call from God? Mm. Right? Yes. Your central call is not being a pastor, 
or a missionary or a, a, a good administrator, the central call all of us have is to be with Christ. You know, when the disciples were called, as it is in the Mark, Jesus called the 12 disciples to be with him, then cast out demons and preach and so forth. So being with Jesus, loving him with all our heart, that is central, that's called, that's what God wants from all of us. Once we come so close to him, he will guide us in everything else. It's super, very good to be with you. Yeah. Sir, yes, thank you so much, sir. Just one more question I would like sure. to ask you um, is that in this fast changing world where technological development is so high and, and any kind of information, let it be temptation, it is right at our hand. So what advice would you like to give to the young generations? Well, you see, you go to a hotel. Yes. You can eat anything, there are plenty of things there. How do you choose what to eat? You choose. There's so many good things. Or you go to buffet. All the food is spread around. Mm. You don't eat everything. Yes. You look at what is best mm. and you choose it. If you, it's knowledge today also is like a buffet. Mm. Everything is spread before you. Yes. But you ought to know what is good for you, what is not good for you. Mm. And the food, whatever you eat, doesn't do good, well, whatever you eat and digest mm. will be good for you. The knowledge also is like that. Mm. Uh, mm. Whatever is good for you, you have to choose. Mm. That choosing has to be by the guidance of the Spirit of God. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much, sir, for this wonderful time that you have given sure. uh, to us. And I hope that even in the future, more uh, generation will be inspired by you thank and your works. May God bless you, sir. Yeah, thank you very much. And uh, even though your place and my place is mm. far apart yes. by modern technology you talked about, yes. we can link together. Yes. We can even have interviews like this. Wow. Anytime we can uh, record video and send and all of that. Yes. You see, technology is God's gift. Mm. Everything that God has given us, we can work for, use for the good and use for the bad. Mm. So let us all continue to use technology for the very best. Yes. Okay. Thank you, sir. Oh, sure enough. Yeah, thank you. It was a pleasure. Thank you so much, everyone, for your time and for viewing, and I hope you are blessed. Thank you.